for utilization of the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. So how do we know that this is a definite integral? Well, because we have a definitive uh, boundaries here, we have a de definite lower and upper limit of integration. So that's how we know that this is a definite integral. If there are no limits to the integration um, problem, uh, then we'll have an indefinite integral situation. Alrighty. Okay, so let's go ahead um, and evaluate this integral. So we're looking for the integral of fr from negative 2 to 2 of x to the third minus 2x over x dx. All right, before we get started evaluating this integral, let's review FTC part one again real quick so we know exactly what we're going to do. So the formula for definite integrals or FTC one, in some books is referred to as two, but it doesn't really matter. It's just one of the fundamental theorems of calculus is as follows. If you're integrating a function, let's say um, f of x from a to b with respect to x, what you're going to do first is integrate the function. The antiderivative can be represented with uppercase f of x. So you're going to evaluate the antiderivative um, from about the limits of integration. All right. So you evaluate the antiderivative at the upper limit minus the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit. So these are the steps that we're going to implement in this problem. So step one, we'll find the antiderivative of the integrand right here. That will give us um, uppercase f of x, and then we'll evaluate it at the limits of integration, namely negative 2 to 2. Okay? All right, so how do we have in integrate this integrand right here? Well, we're going to use rougher to help us out. So let's look at this and see which method can we use here. Um, it looks like this is definitely a candidate for rewrites. We want to rewrite this integral. Okay, so how can we rewrite this integral? Well, we can decompose it into um, two algebraic fractions and then reduce from there. All right, so we have the integral from negative 2 to 2 of x to the third over x minus 2x over x. All righty, so um, we're going to find that integral with respect to x. So let's simplify that. So we have the integral from um, negative 2 to 2, x to the third over x to the first power using the quotient property of exponents. You just subtract, right? When you're dividing exponents with the same base, you subtract the power. So we have x, x squared um, minus, and then these ones just divide out the x's, 2 dx. Now, why did we rewrite? Well, now we can apply the power rule in evaluating this integral, okay? So it's always convenient if you can express your integrand as, as a polynomial, and then you just use the power rule to integrate them term by term. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate this integral right here. So when we integrate x squared, that'll give us x to the third over 3. And then when we integrate um, 2, that'll give us 2x. So we are, this is our uppercase f of x that we're talking about, the antiderivative, okay? So we're evaluating the antiderivative from negative 2 to 2. So what we'll do is we'll evaluate this at the upper limit and then subtract from what we get when we evaluate it at the lower limit. Now if we plug in the upper limit, uh, 2 into the x's, what are we going to get? We're going to get... Um, <clears throat> We're going to get 2 to the third power over 3 minus 2 times 2, okay? Minus, and then we're going to plug in negative 2, the lower limit of integration into this, and then we're going to have negative 2 to the third over 3 minus negative 2, okay? All right, so if you take a look at the setting that it, um, we have right here, we, um, I deliberately made a mistake, a mistake that many students make. Uh, do you see what the mistake is? All right, so what is the mistake? The mistake is as follows. When you are subtracting, you're supposed to encapsulate the left part right here in parentheses, okay? 
so that it without the parentheses that will result in a sign error so keep that in mind it's a common mistake that many students make is they forget to um, put the minus and put the parentheses sorry put the parentheses in front of the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit okay all right so from here on out it's just going to be arithmetic we're going to PEMDAS this expression real quick 2 to the third is 8 8 over 3 minus 4 let's write that as a fraction um, minus and then negative 2 to the third power is going to be negative 8 over 3 and then minus minus plus 3 I mean plus 2 okay <clears throat> Oh, there was a two right here. I left it out. Okay, so that's the two right there. And then when you multiply those two together, you get um, four, positive four. Let's write that also as a fraction, okay? All right, so the reason I'm writing everything as fractions is I want to find the LCD and then it will make it easy to evaluate what the um, resulting expression is okay so the LCD of 3 and 1 obviously is 3 so the fractions without 3 in the denominator position will multiply those by 3 so multiply this by 3 top and bottom likewise this one right here the 4 and then while we're at it we can distribute the minus sign to this fraction to the right okay so we have 8 over 3 minus 12 over 3 minus times minus makes this a plus plus 8 over 3 and then minus times this minus makes that a minus minus 12 over 3 all right so if we go ahead and evaluate this basically going to have 8 plus 8 is 16 minus 24 16 minus 24 over 3 that would give us negative 8 over 3 and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the answer to question number 11. So answer to question number 11 is option letter A. All right. So in this example, we highlighted one common mistake that students make, which is forgetting to put the parentheses. Well, um, what is another common mistake that you think um, students can make when solving this problem? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, hopefully, your preparation for your AP Calc exam, of course, to give us a like or a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very helpful to us. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Tons of support resources for your Calc class can be found on mathgodserve.com under AP Calculus. Do check it out. And if you have any comments or questions, you can specify it in the comment section below. And we'll be more than glad to respond. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.